of the possible risk factors and association of this risk factor among the disease complications and to formulate strategies for prevention and management of Hello. the complications. So what I did was I retrospectively analyzed I'm all the patients in the institute who received a pre-lapse post-evaluation from July 17 to July 19. No, no, it's okay. I'm in Bangalore. 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 study was 96 percent. Most common ability surgery done at our center was the squamous cell carcinoma in 90 percent cases followed by uh, benign pathologies in all the uh, other patients. These are the free flaps we used uh, and among all these free flaps, uh, the free fibula flap and the intersectomist flap had 100 percent success rate. These are few complications. The major ones uh, included nine cases of venous congestion two arterial thrombosis and three flap failures. So uh, all of the patients who were suspected for these major complications like arterial thrombosis and venous congestion, there were uh, nine. Nine patients uh, were suspected for these compromises and they were taken for re-exploration. Uh, out of these nine patients, only two patients required re -anastomosis, and all other patients they needed uh, positional uh, adjustments. And we could survey seven out of these nine cases. Uh, with logistic regression test, we found significance with diabetes. Like diabetic patients, they have got three times more chances of developing complications and five times more chances of having a re-exploration or uh, going for a microvascular compromise. Uh, these are two cases of arterial thrombosis, the, 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 the failure cases. Uh, the first one is DCIA flap. Uh, we could identify that mechanical trauma was the cause mechanical trauma to the donor vessels was the cause for failure of this flap. The second one is radius thrombosis flap. We could identify that uh, uh, aggressive use of electro battery by uh, one of our uh, oncosurgery team was probably the cause of failure of this flap. Uh, this is a case of delayed venous compromise. Uh, it usually happens because of low caliber donor vessels. This uh, flap failure had happened gradually at six postoperative days. So this case was later managed by radial forum flap. So uh, to, uh, the preventive strategies for uh, avoiding these uh, complications would be to avoid mechanical trauma, to avoid uh, uh, aggressive use of uh, electrocautery, and to avoid acute angle, particularly veins. Uh, what we do at our center is we uh, position the vein using eight zero switches uh, to the wound uh, bed in neck. And uh, we uh, maintain the head position for at least four days we, because we have seen very delayed uh, 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 comp compromise in microvasculature after even after five, four, five days. And aggressive re exploration in any case you suspect for any microvascular compromise. Uh, I'm discussing a unique case. We manage this case like uh, we have done bony reconstruction along with full thickness cheek defect reconstruction using pipe and free fibula flap. So, what happened was after doing reconstruction in this case. Immediately on table, we found uh, the distal pedal, which was there. It had microvascular compromise. The, uh, there was there was a lot of uh, uh, venous bleeding from the pedal. So what we did was after depetalization, we left the depetalized part like that. In the photo, you can see how the uh, outer pedal is uh, having dark bleeding, and where inner pedal was bleeding very nicely. So what we did was we left the de-epithelized part unsutured and we just kept the gap like that. So because if you do suturing in these cases, uh, it will lead to further worsening of the flap. So uh, we leave it like that and what we did was because the venous compromise was not uh, improving, every day we could see a lot of edema in the flap and a lot of, uh, lot of uh, oozing in the surrounding tissue. What we did uh, special in this case was uh, we did multiple prickings every post-operative day, at least for six post-operative day, we kept on doing this multiple pricking. It works wonderfully. It, it works like a leash therapy. This thing we did for the first time in our at our center and we found very good result. At the sixth post-operative day, we got
got this uh, flag uh, with, like it, it, the outer pattern taken up very well and then we did surgery. Uh, that's the suspension surgery, you see the big one here um, for uh, avoiding any dehiscence in the upper part. So wound dehiscence uh, is a uh, usually happens because of inadequate flap length. Uh, in the first one you can see that this is the pre pupilla flap and that is the most common location in the retromolar tribal region. Uh, you should always use a uh, more length in the distal part of the flap. And the second one is uh, the orocutaneous fistula because of uh, inadequate sutureing in the cases where you do compartment resections for the uh, tongue. And uh, so uh, good uh, closure should be done in lateral pharyngeal region. This is a case of partial flap necrosis in a bipedal free fibula flap. We have used the skin pedal for both the intraoral and extraoral uh, lining. At the region of rehabilitation, uh, what a mistake I had done was I had taken very deep bite in this region. So that, that was the cause for uh, uh, this uh, partial flap necrosis. So uh, I advise using, not using such deep switches in this region. Among donor site morbidities, uh, the necrosis of FCR tendon is the most common one and uh, the treatment would be to excise it completely and let, let the wound heal uh, 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 secondarily and uh, the prevention would be to avoid damaging the paratenon while raising the radial for of free flaps. So to conclude, the success of free flaps depends on series of perfectly followed steps. Uh, prompt surgical expression is the key to success and very operative optimization of blood sugar level is essential to reduce microvascular compromise. Thank you so much.